Good morning, afternoon, and evening. I'm Rachel Ndesam, the HRH 2030 Program Technical Director at Chemonix. I am thrilled to moderate this panel that's important and timely at GH Tech X on reaching communities through a locally led and innovative COVID response. This pandemic has highlighted health inequities. Most every health system around the world has experienced some kind of disruption to essential health services. And unfortunately, people who are most affected by COVID are those in the most under-resourced settings. Today, our panel discussion of esteemed experts, Asif, Jimmy, Agrippina, and Madeline, will share best practices, new technologies, and vaccine strategies in community health to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. Karibouni, soyez de la bienvenue tout le monde. Since Astana's renewed emphasis on primary health care and the 2018 World Health Organization guideline recommendations to optimize and professionalize community health worker programs, there has been an uptick in investments. Indeed, community health is integral to essential and primary health care services, including sexual and reproductive health services. We need community health to respond to the current pandemic, including vaccine rollout, to reach those in the health system's last mile and to mitigate inequities. We need community health to prepare for future health emergencies as well. Countries that have been successful in responding to COVID-19 had already made significant investments in community health programs and digital health technologies. Combined, these elements can improve community engagement, data use for strategic and targeted decision-making, and they can ultimately improve health system resilience, responsiveness, and adaptability. You may have read USAID's recently released Vision for Health System Strengthening 2030. The HSS vision has desired immediate outcomes of equity, quality, and resource optimization. The vision also promotes cross-cutting approaches, such as enabling local organizations, making cross-sectoral linkages, and promoting social and behavior change. Community health and digital health are all at the core of this. To quote the HSS vision, fully optimized community health platforms integrated in health and local systems contribute to quality, equity, and resource optimization and health outcomes through achieving and sustaining effective coverage of preventive, promotive, and curative high impact activities at scale, end quote. To harness the role of communities and health systems, leaders must define and invest in these platforms, including protecting and investing in community health workers and providing them with the tools and supplies that they need to perform their jobs effectively and safely. So I'm pleased to start our panel conversation with Asif Akram. Welcome, Asif. Thank you very um, much. Thank you. Um, so I understand that Living Goods is um, working extensively in Kenya and Uganda. And as the Chief Technology Officer at Living Goods, tell us, as the pandemic took hold and countries put in place lockdown measures, how were digital tools adapted and deployed at the community level to ensure the continuation of essential health services? Thank you very much, Rachel, once again. Um, yes, the pandemic hit living goods like other organizations, and few of the organizations were much more prepared, and few of them were not prepared at all. Luckily for living goods, we were prepared because we have an in-house tech team, which means that we have a luxury of uh, quickly reacting and modifying our tools so that we can uh, protect community health workers and households. We have to understand that uh, the communities which we are serving are the ones who are out of mainstream health facilities and they are, have a limited access. So, it was our moral and responsibility to uh, protect them. And when we are thinking about our household, but the medium of reaching to our household is our community health workers who are going door to door to serve those communities assessment and treatment and providing them 
um, main uh, or essential commodities. We realized that our community health workers can't do uh, day-to-day business as usual. And because uh, exposure to the environment and going uh, from door to door means that they are vulnerable. It means, can we utilize our digital tools in a different way? Um, yes, uh, we can't have a luxury of changing the tools completely because um, uh, our community health workers have to use those tools and there was no possibility of retraining them. So it means that we should uh, adopt our existing technology in a better way. What this means is that how can we make sure that our community health workers have less face-to-face interaction with the uh, household they are serving or the community. So they are less exposed to that. vulnerability and the environment, which can have a potential for COVID uh, pandemic. So as a first step, we decided that our workflows, which are more based on face-to-face should become low touch. Can we do something uh, via mobile phones uh, by calling them rather than visiting them? And then we went further when the pandemic was becoming more severe and when wave two or uh, wave three were approaching, can we go completely no touch? So first from face-to-face, we went to low touch and then no touch. And in order to achieve those um, objectives, our main purpose was that utilize existing technologies like Rapid Pro uh, from UNICEF for SMS messaging uh, campaigning, uh, toll free number for so that the household can call that number. We immediately realized that uh, we can't do just a knee jerk reaction and build the tools which may not be used after a couple of years. Uh, we learned that what happened in the West Africa a few years ago, uh, most of the countries developed surveillance system for Ebola, uh, but they were not in a position to use those tools anymore. So uh, we have to think very differently then what is the ROI on uh, doing this thing? How those things uh, or the tools we are bringing are scalable, maintainable, and flexible. Unfortunate reality is that uh, this pandemic will be with us in one way or another way. There may not be COVID-19, there will be something. There may not be something global, there may be something regional. So how we can build the tool and we build the ecosystem which can serve our um, communities, we have to realize that uh, we are in a sector which is, uh, if we are not going to react quickly, the people who are suffering are going to suffer more. Uh, The uh, communities which have unnecessary deaths, they will have much more uh, fatalities. So it is just a very conscious decision that we have to react quickly. And we were very um, fortunate that uh, being a part of uh, many other organizations as a strategic partner, as a uh, contributor in SHIC, and we work with many different partners like um, Medic Mobile, uh, Damagi, ONA. So end of the day, uh, developing and building tools for uh, as a response to such pandemic is not a single organization. Uh, job, or it is not doable by single uh, organization. It has to be collective effort. And when we do collective effort, it means that we are building a tools which are much more sustainable, uh, which are more standard based. And this is the way we did, uh, we approached it. Then on the other hand, we also work very closely with ministries of health in Uganda and Kenya, the areas where, where they need a support. We did a lot of um, uh, COVID uh, awareness campaigns for the both ministries. Uh, we helped them to uh, develop the surveillance system, uh, op- operationalize it. In Uganda, we were ha- helping the uh, Uganda government and ministry for call center. So it was once again collective things. Few things we adopted for our own operation and few things uh, we did uh, for the wider audience within the countries. Excellent. Um, if you imagine, you know, five or 10 years ago, this concept of low touch or no touch 
community health services. I think few of us would imagine, but that's really innovative. Um, and I appreciate your thoughts about having a scalable ecosystem um, and think how you can build and move forward. Thank you, Asif. Next, I want us to hear from Jimmy and Zhao, the Global Medical Director at Pathfinder International. So Jimmy, sexual and reproductive health services are often the first to be forgotten in a crisis. Can you tell us what Pathfinder has done to make sure that SRH services still reached those who needed them most during the COVID-19 pandemic? Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for the opportunity uh, to share the adaptation that Pathfinder has made to ensure that we maintain the provision of sexual reproductive health services. At the same time, we maintain the communities that we serve at the center of the COVID-19 response. But before sharing the adaptation that we've made uh, in collaboration with Ministry of Health and Communities, let me share three observ observations about this pandemic. The first one is the COVID-19 pandemic has reminded all of us how unprepared and uncoordinated the world is when it comes to anticipating and responding to major crises that goes beyond our national boundaries. The second observation is the pandemic has shown us that both the global organization that we are and the communities that we serve, we can all be uh, equally affected and travel restriction is just one example. And finally, the disaster we are living in is just the result of lack of investment in preparedness, locally led and sustainable solutions and a failure to create a resilient health system and communities. So as we are projecting ourselves for the next five years, let's sit down and better coordinate, better prepare uh, those communities and those health system that we are supporting in countries. So let me share a couple of adaptations that uh, Pathfinder has made in collaboration with Minister of Health. First of all, we decided to build on lesson learned uh, during the last six decades of our work in development sector. And one of these lessons is we cannot achieve sustainable and lasting change without a full participation of those that we serve. And through a combination of uh, client-centered approach, uh, community participation, we really ensured that uh, community representative, uh, provider of services, uh, local MOH authorities are, uh, remain on the driver, not on the passenger seat. Uh, for instance, uh, the development of messages or tools, communications, material um, to, uh, were developed in collaborations with all the stakeholders. We supported MOH communications plan, uh, but also COVID response plan. We supported community-based uh, uh, organizations to spread the message in their communities uh, using uh, the, the appropriate channel. And we created the terrain for uh, ownership and sustainability. The second things we, we, we have done, it's really building trust in the health system and building trust in, in the, the local champion. As we know, uh, the, there are conspiracy theory that fuel the discussions and debate in those co communities, disrupting trust to the health system and to uh, uh, trusted uh, champion. So uh, we really worked in partnership with uh, Ministry of Health, trusted the local champion, including community and religious leader who were really instrumental to channel the right and evidence-based information to these communities and rebuild the trust in, in science. The third things I would like to share uh, is it's really about embracing innovation through the use of digital technology and, and self-care. And, and even in a remote area where we work, uh, we leverage digital technologies such as SMS, WhatsApp, Facebook page or, or radio broadcast to keep community informed, but also to continue to train uh, remotely 
uh, community health worker and, and provider. Another thing I would like to add, it's about creating conditions for a locally led response. Uh, and this through existing uh, community support and, and network. Uh, and really our role is to equip them, uh, to provide them with the resources they need so that they can lead the response. And we had really to remind the communities and, and provider that we are their partner, but we are not there to replace them or to replace their government. government. The last thing, it's really a focus on preparedness. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is not the first uh, crisis and will not be the last. So responding to current need, it's great. However, health system in countries where we work remain fragile and are not ready to deal uh, with future shock. So we are already initiating uh, discussions with communities and, MO, uh, and health officials to create structure and mechanisms that better prepare health system and community to mitigate the impact of future calamities. And uh, health vaccines are now becoming more and more available. We are supporting MOH to leverage the resources and the power of community uh, to combat conspiracy theory, to educate people on the benefit of vaccine, and, and also advocating for equity in the distribution of vaccines so that no one is left, le left behind. So as many of you, we are still learning and adjusting our program to ensure that women, girls, and all the community members uh, we serve exercise their right to sexual reproductive health uh, uh, information and services. Thank you so much, Jimmy. I think highlighting trust, ac um, accurate information, and preparedness are all really important in the, in the work that you do. Thank you so much. Now, please join me to share a very warm welcome to Agrippina Adema, a community health volunteer from Kakamega County in Kenya. Welcome, Agrippina. Thank you so much for this opportunity you have given me to, to have a, a word with you. I'm Agrippina. My I'm Agrippina Inyanya Adema from Western Kenya in Kakamega County. I support women, pregnant women and pre postnatal care and family planning. And I also support children under five years, assess and treat for malaria, diarrhea and, and pneumonia. And also I refer and follow up and drug immunization status. In general, I also give education to my community, including on COVID-19. Thank you so much for being with us today. Um, Thank you. Yes, we, this, we are recording this um, in the first week of April, which is World Health Worker Week. So we extend our gratitude to you and health workers around the world for all of the very important work that you do. But we also know that applause is not enough. We need to do more than just thanking you. So we want to hear from you. What do you need? What has been the biggest challenge that you have faced serving your community during the pandemic? And what has helped you the most? Over to you. Actually, the challenge that I came through is misinformation in the community. People lacked correct information, especially in the beginning. They were rumors, they were myths, and even some didn't even take preve preventive measures seriously. And also, challenge number two, as a as personal level, I went into isolation for 21 days after testing positive for COVID during a routine health worker test. This meant I could not physically interact with my clients to provide services during the time. Also, but I had my, sm my smartphone that helped me 
to interact with with them with the smartphone had the, the smart health app from living goods it allowed me to continue providing services while isolation and to use low touch protocols of interactions with clients thereafter it also allowed me to access e-learning content on COVID-19. It allowed me to continue providing services while in isolation and to use, to use low, touch, low touch protocols of interaction with clients thereafter. It also allowed me to access, it also al allowed me to access education. I educate people and also I had IEC materials, we used them to educate people and ensure they had the right information to prevent COVID. We had also this tool PPE. We had masks, gloves, and other things like soap to ensure we are able to do our work safely. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing your experience and I hope that you were able to recover well and that you are in good health now, Agrippina. Thank you. Yes, I'm okay. I'm good. Good. It's very good to hear. And really amazing to hear firsthand about how technology has been helping not just communities to get the information they need, but also community health workers to do their jobs safely. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Wonderful. So. I next want to hear last but not least from Madeline Ballard, Executive Director of the Community Health Impact Coalition. Hi, Madeline. Um, so it's really good news to hear that COVID-19 vaccines are reaching countries throughout the COVAX facility, but want to hear from you what health systems can do to integrate community health workers within their workforce planning and strategic planning for the pandemic response. How can countries and governing bodies ensure that community health workers are prioritized to receive the vaccine so that they can perform the important work like Agrippina just described? So I'm really grateful, thank you, Agrippina, for providing that really vivid um, description because I think it's, um, your experience reflects the experience of health workers uh, around the world. Uh, it's really clear that ever since the first case of COVID-19 um, were diagnosed, CHWs have played an important role in maintaining uh, essential health services, as Agrippina described, um, but also in fighting the pandemic, everything from contact tracing to home-based uh, care. Um, and as the world's largest ever vaccination campaign uh, is getting underway, uh, they can play an even bigger role from identifying and enrolling target populations to tracking and reporting outcomes. And that's really critical because um, what we can't stress enough is that the current health workforce capacity is wholly inadequate to the task of both putting health programs back on track, but also responding to the pandemic. Uh, even before COVID-19, the world was already projected to be short about 15 million healthcare workers um, by 2030 and the global vaccine rollout over the next 24 months. Uh, will add millions more to that deficit, not to mention uh, the many colleagues who we've sadly lost uh, over the course of the pandemic. So given the scale of the vaccine rollout, um, the urgency of, in, of investments in the health workforce really can't be overstated. Uh, CHWs particularly who are uh, quick to train, uh, quick to get to work can help fill this gap, uh, but really only if they're well supported. And I really appreciated this discussion because it's touched on many of the ways in which uh, what that support looks like and why it's so important. So um, the Community Health Impact Coalition actually collaborated with UNICEF and the World Health Organization uh, on country guidance for CHW roles uh, during the COVID vaccine uh, rollout. And I'm just here to give you kind of the, the top five key takeaways and you can learn more on the WHO's COVID-19 vaccine introduction toolkit website. Um, so the first is, and I've, I've already alluded to this, that CHWs have a critical role to play, and they're often sort of referred to as the forgotten uh, cadre, but it's clear that they're essential to planning, um, identifying target populations, particularly in countries that don't have a robust adult vaccination program, 
um, outreach, uh, engagement, education, uh, mobilization, and then of course tracking and reporting outcomes, which is really key uh, when it comes to vaccine rollout. Secondly, it's clear that CHWs have to be represented at the planning table. Um, health workers, including CHWs, with their knowledge, uh, particularly CHWs of last mile health delivery, um, experience in having the deep conversations that help overcome vaccine hesitancy, uh, community mobilization expertise, uh, they should be represented on these national coordinating committees for vaccination um, because we have evidence that they can vastly um, improve and speed up that process. Third, and this is kind of almost the root of everything, CHWs need to be, as you mentioned, Rachel, counted because uh, in many places uh, it's not clear or there's not at national level how many CHWs uh, are actually practicing in the country, where they are, who they are. Um, and once they're counted, that enables them to be vaccinated as part of the initial vaccine allocation um, in order to support that COVID rollout. Community health workers are health workers. So like every other health worker, they should be protected when doing um, their job. Um, and so things like having a CHW registry or minimally an estimate stratified by geographic, by geographic location um, for CHWs uh, are critical. And also that's a health system building measure too. Um, once CHWs are, are adequately counted, we can begin to support them um, such that they can better serve their neighbors. Um, which brings me to my four, more fourth point, which is that CHWs need to be paid and protected to do this work. I think we often want to jump ahead and have CHWs uh, be trained and deployed. Um, but we've seen throughout the pandemic that many CHWs have had to serve without personal protective equipment. We've seen CHWs serving in the front lines not getting paid. Again, we're on the precipice of the largest vaccine campaign in the history of the world, and a number of the folks that are going to be critical to making it happen uh, are not receiving risk pay, um, have no life insurance, um, and you know are getting paid peanuts or, or not at all uh, for these essential roles. And so applause is very much not enough. Uh, and, it's, and it's clear, again, not only is this the right thing to do, but it's the smart thing to do, because CHWs who are connected with health systems through compensation, through dedicated supervision, through the provision, again, if necessary, personal protective equipment like Agrippina um, mentioned, medical masks, eye protection, gloves, um, uh, are best place to fight COVID and the next pandemic. And I think actually it's important, particularly as we we're discussing uh, the really cool ways in which technology have been deployed in this pandemic, um, that there are certain services that CHWs are relied on, like malaria testing, vaccination, malnutrition case management, home-based care provision that actually can't be done over the phone. They can't be done from six feet away. They do require that proximity. And so this protection is essential. And so I think while we can certainly reduce risk with technology, uh, we can't eliminate it without eliminating essential services. And so um, that pairing of smart technology as well as just basic you know, bog standard protection is gonna be key here. And then finally, um, this is not the case in all countries because of course the, the roles of CHWs vary quite widely, um, but uh, the guidance does encourage countries to kind of assess vaccine specifications and consider temporary regulatory clearance to actually allow uh, appropriately trained, supported, supervised CHWs to vaccinate. Um, and this already happens in some countries and uh, it's, a, it's a relevant option because again, it can allow CHWs to critically expand their workforce during um, the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. And so um, as a coalition, we've been kind of collaborating for several months to ensure planners uh, and uh, at the Ministry of Health level are aware of the recommendations and aware of these roles for CHWs and are um, putting them in place in their plans. And we're seeing uh, the fruit already from Rwanda to Bangladesh to Kenya, CHWs are being vaccinated right now. Uh, and we're so glad that they're being protected to, as they continue um, their essential work. Thank you so much, Madeline. The recommendations that you share are, are really essential as we think about how we can move forward and how community health workers can count in health systems um, for which they're so essential. So I want to share gratitude to Asif, Jimmy, Agrippina, and Madeline for their valuable perspectives and recommendations. If it's all right, I'm going to improvise one question and give you each two or three sentences to share your best advice to others in global health and community health trying to innovate in the response. 
what is the advice that you would give them? And we can go in the order that you shared your initial remarks, starting um, with Asif. What advice would you give to others? Thank you very much, Rachel. Um, the advice is very simple. That starts simple. Innovation doesn't mean that it should be complicated or complex. And secondly, understand your stakeholders or end users. There is no point in having a innovation or changes in the tools which cannot be utilized by the final end users and services cannot be delivered. So that is my uh, advice. And this is what we learned. Thank you. Thank you. Great advice. Jimmy. Um, the only advice I would give, uh, it's really to approach the innovation or to explore the innovation with the people that are supposed to be using the, 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 the new way of working. And I'm really thinking about uh, the provider, the community health worker, but also the, the, the MOH uh, colleagues that we work with in those countries. Thank you, Jimmy. Agrippina, are you able to unmute and share your advice for community health in the COVID response? Yes, thank you. I could advise that every community health worker should take precautions of COVID-19. Make sure you follow precautions, wear a mask, wash your hands with soap, keep social distance so that we may not get COVID-19. Thank you. That is good advice for everyone. Thank you, Agrippina. And Madeline. I'll follow uh, in Agrippina's footsteps with that advice. The Community Health Impact Coalition exists to make professionalized community health workers a norm worldwide. And we acknowledge that fair pay, proper equipment, dedicated supervision are not rocket science. At the same time, as actually the founder of one of our member organizations once wrote, um, insisting on these basic supports for CHWs ends up being innovative because it's almost unheard of to insist that the destitute sick receive high quality care as a right. So we regret um, that what we're doing, what we're advocating for is rare and innovative, and we look forward to the day uh, when it is not. Thank you. Um, so this has been such a rich discussion. Thank you for your time. Let us, in closing, invest in strong community health programs adapt and utilize proven digital health solutions and build within the ecosystem for scale. Let's prioritize those community level essential services, including sexual and reproductive health. And let us protect and honor community health workers with, with decent work um, and, and basic protections, and you know, ideally above and beyond, so that they can really fulfill their greatest potential within the health system. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of GH. Tech X and take care. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, all.